Yeah. As Scott was talking last night when we first started this thing, we was all pretty well kids, I think, you know, about 30 years ago or so. It seemed that way. But uh, we all got adults. This is a, an adult youth camp, I guess. We kind of grew up with it. And, uh, but I appreciate Brother Cal. We'll make him welcome this time for you. been coming here long enough that I heard her when she was too soon. And to show you the mercy of God, I thought, bless their hearts, they just keep getting that little girl out there, making her sing, making her sing. And uh, they kept working with her, working with her, and it is amazing what God has done. The Lord sure has gifted her and given her great talent. And we appreciate the singing so much, so much tonight. And uh, just great to have all of you out. It's good uh, to have my in-laws back tonight. And, uh, of course, what's especially good is because they're with me my, my wife's with me tonight. Uh, she, doesn't, uh, she doesn't leave our home church very often. And uh, I encourage her to stay there. I should have encouraged her tonight after we got on the road and started over toward... Kentucky, where we all met up, I told her, I said, you know, tonight's board meeting night. They might fire me while I'm gone. <laughs> and I always think, when I think about board meetings, I always think about church had a board meeting one time. They announced at the end of the service, they said, we'll have board meeting following service tonight. And uh, after everyone clears out, and everyone cleared out, this one fellow was visited, and he just sat there. And uh, they said, sir, maybe you didn't understand what we said, but we're having a board meeting. He said, well, if there's anybody here any more bored than what I am, I'd say. <laughs> so, uh, what I think about a lot of board meetings. But I'll leave that in the hands of Brian Mayer. That's why I call him Boy Wonder. <laughs> we're just glad the Lord lets us preach. Have some friends in. There, I, I asked Eric, I said, how far away are you? He said, 75 miles. I said, that's about how far we are away. I said, so we just met in the middle. And uh, they make it up to Rubyville pretty frequently, and that's about a two and a half hour drive for them to get up there to be with us. And we're glad that they're out with us tonight. And others that's visiting as well, it's just great to have you in the service. Good to have Donna along as well tonight, back with us. And I promise I'm going to tell you, preacher, you're down here tonight. And uh, we will keep that secret, okay? If you keep it a secret, I'll keep it a secret. But we're, we're glad that you're here. It's great to worship the Lord together. Turn tonight, if you will, to the book of Joshua, chapter 6. We ended last night dealing with the fifth chapter, the last three verses, and looked at the captain of the Lord's host and dealt with Christ, him being the captain of the Lord's host as he was preparing Joshua to go into the battle that he was about to fight. And on last night we dealt just a little bit about the qualifications to be the captain of the Lord's host. They had to be a great, the greatest warrior in the army. Had to follow the king's orders. They could never have surrendered in a battle. They had to have been wounded in a battle to be able to understand what the troops go through. They had to lead the troops in the battle and had to have the ability to encourage and of course we know that all of that was a picture of Christ Himself coming to comfort Joshua because they're getting ready to fight the greatest battle that they've ever fought. The greatest battle they fought wasn't 40 years in the wilderness. It's the enemy that they face now right inside the land that God has given to them. And you know, the devil will allow you to possess certain things, but then he'll bring enemies into that to keep you from enjoying what God's given to you. But don't always be discouraged about, about adversaries. Adversaries are not bad for us. Truth be known, everyone here that's saved tonight, you probably have never grown much spiritually during the good times of your life. Most people grow when there's opposition, when there's a force against us, and we fight against the force. That's when we gain more strength than any other time. Years ago, there was a fish company on the East Coast in the New England states, and they had signed an agreement with several of the large restaurants out on the West Coast in California to deliver fresh cod 
to them. And they try to come up with ways to deliver that codfish all the way across country and it'd be fresh when it got there. At first they thought we'd just load them in tankers and ship them out. When they got there, they were dead. They come up with the idea, well, we'll freeze them and ship them out. But when they got them there, the meat wasn't good. It lost its flavor and it was rather mushy. So finally someone came up with a bright idea. Let's put the fish in the tank alive, the tankers alive. And then they did one thing. They dropped one catfish inside the tanker. The catfish is the mortal enemy of codfish. When they got to the west coast, all of the fish were fresh and alive. You know why? They spent their entire time watching out for the enemy. Sometimes enemies in our life is not something that's there to weaken us. The enemies that come into our life sometimes are there to strengthen us because we have to fight against the enemies. Here we are now then facing the enemies in this great city that they call Jericho. And it's a walled city. And let's read a little bit about what they did in this particular chapter. I want to read just maybe five or six, maybe seven verses to you tonight. Let's begin with verse 1. In Joshua 6 and verse 1, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around the city once. Thus shall you do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. And the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, now what's this next line? All the people shall shout with a great shout. I, I don't know if you read that or not. All the people shall what? Shout. Shout hey. with a great what? Shout. Some of the people? No. All of the people hey. shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat. They're shouting, but the walls don't fall until they shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up, every man straight before it. That just means when the walls fall, there's no hindrance. They just walk in with ease. We would say today, come to our church, we have ground level entrance. And that's exactly what happened. In verse 10, we read again, And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout. Then shall you shout. In verse 20, And so the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Now when we read all of this, we know we've heard this encounter from the time that we're children about the walls of Jericho. And we know what happened. And, and we almost know the story so well that if we're not careful, we'll miss some real truths that are special in the Word of God. To fully understand what's happening here, it's just the mercy of God. I, I don't know if you go back to the encounter of how everything took place. Before this city fell, they'd gone inside the city. And the spies inside the city were almost caught. And they went in to see what could be done. There was one by the name of Rahab. She was a harlot. She lived on the wall of the city. 